for joining everyone. Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. You know, we've been talking about boots, we've been talking about savage denim, we've been talking about heritage-inspired leather jackets. But you know, your style will not be complete without accessories that complement that style, that create that uh, full experience and will complete that look. You know, I've been uh, getting questions and uh, people asking me to talk about different accessories, you know, rings and uh, watches and uh, maybe we can even talk about knives <laughs> today let's talk about watches i want to talk to you about um, two watches specifically you know we've been saying hey 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 you know have less things have better things but have less things so when you take that principle and apply it to to a watch Let's talk about two watches, just two watches. If you only have one of these watches or even two, potentially that's all you need. It should complement your style. It should complete your overall experience. It should communicate something about you as a person and it should really communicate who you are as a human being. You know, the two watches that I want to talk about are these two beauties. So in my left hand, I've got Tudor Black Bay 58. In my right hand, I have Omega Speedmaster Moon Watch Coil Axle Chronometer 3861. Whew, that was a mouthful. But you know what, before we talk about these watches. I want to tell you my journey. I want to tell you my journey as a, as a collector. I have been collecting watches for 20 years now. And um, you know, at one point, uh, I was quite a successful trader. I was trading watches. And um, you know, ever since I was you know, 12 years old, I was fascinated by these little machines that have this incredibly small but precise engine that were able to, to uh, keep track of time to such precision. So about, I would say 20 years ago, I began to uh, uh, collect watches. Uh, I began to collect them in earnest. I started collecting Russian watches, Palot, Strela, and uh, I started collecting them when collecting was not, you know, a favorite thing to do. <laughs> you know, where, where there was no, you know, internet as we know it today, the information was quite uh, hard to get and you really had to work for your hobby. So I started collecting palots and, um, you know, was able to uh, build a collection and uh, eventually I sold that collection and my, my interest transitioned into micro brands and um, I, I was collecting micro brands and um, uh, I was able to collect uh, rare uh, additions and I was able to sell and see a profit. And in 2012, I decided to sell off my collection. That's when really that concept of having better things but fewer things began to take shape in my life. So I sold off my entire watch collection um, of um, micro brands and uh, I saved up, saved up enough money to buy my first real Swiss watch. It was Omega Speedmaster Professional Moon Watch with the caliber 1861. And it was a special one. It was, it was a watch that uh, was a bit of a uh, surprise to watch community. It became um, known as uh, Speedmaster Teen Teen. And um, yeah, in 2012, I uh, bought one 
for three and a half thousand dollars and that watch went on to become a massive hit with collectors and now it commands prices um, anywhere around twenty thousand dollar mark so that's how it all began for me so i, I took the omega speedmaster teen teen and i sold it and um, as a result of that sale i have few watches like the two that i'm going to share with you right now so the first watch i want to share with you classic iconic legendary even omega speedmaster professional moon watch you know i began telling you a story how i arrived at this place and 10 years ago i i sold off my collection you know with the, with the thought uh, and heart in mind to have fewer things but better things and i had just enough to purchase the omega speedmaster professional moon watch the teen teen edition which is the story in itself and uh, i honestly absolutely loved the the special edition i actually went on to have another special edition and I came the full circle and arrived at this classic variant. It's absolutely stunning. This is the current Omega um, Moonwatch Professional, which has the, the caliber uh, 3861. Now, the, just to give you a little background, it's available in two main variations. Obviously, this watch has so many special editions and so many variations but just for the sake of this video we're going to talk about the two production models two main variations is one is the Hazelite uh, crystal the other one is a um, um, watch that has um, sapphire crystal and it's not just the, for the face but also for the back and it became known as a sandwich <laughs> because you, you can see the movement it's got uh, crystal on both ends but i went with hazelite because it's a pure collector's watch you know it's pure because th this is what astronauts wore on their wrist they wore hazelite because the crystal the thought was that the crystal would shatter in space and would have little shards where it's hazelite doesn't have that shattering um, quality to it and of course it has this beautiful solid case back behind it um, in uh, 1861 behind it there was a um, a shield protecting protecting from uh, magnetism obviously the new uh, 3861 uh, contains that new caliber movement that it's meta certified i mean it's incredible it's certified to withstand 15,000 gas uh, magnetic uh, fields i mean we're talking a magnet in mri machine which is incredible you know I'll just give you a rundown of, um, you know, it's uh, 42 millimeter di diameter, it's 13.58 millimeter height, you know, it accepts 20 millimeter strap straps. And again, this watch is a strap monster. I mean, that's what I love about it. If you want to, you know, dress it up you put it on a nice beautiful bracelet the, the the new 3861 bracelet is absolutely stunning and um, just to give you a quick kind of a insight the the hazelite versus crystal uh, the bracelet uh, the bracelet in hazelite is all matte um, the, the the crystal bracelet uh, model has some polished uh, uh, links in it so that's how you can tell them apart but the biggest difference between hazelite and crystal the crystal has a, a a milk ring what they call it whereas hazelite it's got this beautiful almost kind of almost kind of a heritage vibes um, that it um, the dial is a step dial which is absolutely beautiful you can see that the three-dimensional feel to it it's just stunning now the new movement you know I, I mentioned to you 10 years ago I had the one with 1861 it was a good movement proven tested went to space went to the moon incredible but um, 
What I like about the new movement, the 3861 caliber, it's, it's hacking, which means when you stop the second, it, you know, the second, when you pull the crown, the, the watch, when you stop it, the second hand will actually stop. Whereas the 1861, you know, it just kept going, <laughs> you know? You, you, you would wind it, you, you, you would pull the crown to set the, the time, but the hand second was non-hacking. Non anyway, the, the quality of this new movement is incredible. Uh, it, it's super accurate. This watch is running roughly zero to maybe plus one second a day, which is incredibly, incredibly accurate. And like I said, that this new um, version, it's been released about just a little over a year ago, almost identical to the version, the uh, previous version, which was, um, actually updated in 1996 you know that movie in 1861 was introduced in 1996 from the previous movement 861 which was first released in 1968 1969 anyway so it's got 15 meters uh, um, uh, water um, resistant it's got frequency of 21,600 uh, beats per hour and it's got uh, a 50 um, 50 hour reserve so you wind it out wind it up and it runs for 50 hours you know this watch I, I have it on a, a NADA strap it's got beautiful Speedmaster NASA, beautiful logo, looks, you put this on, you feel good, you know, this might be the only watch you ever need, you ever want, you can have it for every occasion, it could be your companion, <laughs> you could go to the, the snobbish, you know, watch collectors hand wearing this watch and you will have instant respect but you know more than anything it's got heritage vibes it's got quality it says something about a person that was patient enough to save up for it was knowledgeable enough to choose this it, 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 it creates a complete style complete look that is absolutely amazing if you were to have just one watch just one really nice watch that really communicates that heritage vibe that really communicates the style that really communicates that amazing vibe um, as a collector and um, uh, somebody who appreciates high quality things that have uh, a real amazing you know history and heritage behind that would be to the black bay 58 i'll just give you a quick um, uh, stats on this watch the case is 39 millimeters uh, the height of the case is 11.9 millimeters. Uh, what's so nice about this um, the Black Bay 58, it's got, um, you know, a beautiful um, width for the bracelet. It's 20 millimeters, which is perfect for swapping straps. You know, NATO straps is one of my favorite ways of, of, of wearing this watch. You know, lag to lag is 47.75 millimeters. And uh, the watch by many considered to be perfect, perfect uh, size. You know, it's got aluminum, black aluminum insert for the um, one directional uh, basil. Uh, the nice thing about uh, Black Bay 58, you can immediately recognize it, if not for size, for the fact that, um, you know, from say difference from the Black Bay, the 41 millimeter model, is that it's got gold um, numbers, 
on the bezel and obviously the size is much smaller uh, it's got a snowflake rose gold hands which is you know now it's a huge signature <laughs> of Tudor you know th this watch is running MT5402 movement which is you know story amazing story in itself that it's worth reading about it uh, but this movement is um, uh, to a proprietary movement or what they call in-house movement uh, they um, they had a special collaboration going with Bretwin and that's where it all came from it's COSC certified so which means super accurate this was been running plus one second a day for me which is really really good it's 27 uh, joule movement it's it's beating at 28,000 beats per hour and it's got a 70 hour reserve so those are the specs of the watch uh it's got a you know just a beautiful finishing it's got um you know beautiful dial with um, with a, a sort of golden lettering which is very striking with a red uh, triangle on top it just harkens to 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 those vintage heritage pieces and we're going to talk about what it's drawing upon what, what it's um, pulling on what what history it's pulling this on now the thing about this um, wash that i really really love it you know you can dress it up put it on a, on a bracelet you can wear it with a suit for that matter and have that james bond kind of a vibe going on or you could put it on a native strap put it on with a nice heritage you know a military piece and it would be right at home it's absolutely stunning you know black bay 58 they've got many versions of it you've got the black you've got the blue dial you've got silver you've got bronze you've got gold <laughs> there's so much choice but if you're looking just for one i i would highly recommend just to consider the black variant because it's just classic it goes with everything it's got those classic awesome vibes and it like i said it harkens and pulls on the history that tudor has and of course rollick has you know it, it actually harkens to the archetype of you know really uh dive watches <laughs> which is the Rolex Submariner and specifically Rolex Submariner 6204. It was uh, released in 1953 and you would probably know that watch from the some of the earliest the original James Bond movies that uh, Sean Connery would wear on his wrist and obviously the Tudor uh, uh, version of, of of that Submariner was released a year later in 1954 and it was uh, a phenomenal to the dive watch reference 7922 and it became known as uh, Tudor Oyster Prince Submariner so it's got a, a rich history that it's drawing upon it's got a rich heritage and when you put this on you know I've got nine and a quarter inch wrists and it's just perfection you know if you were to have one watch this is a prime candidate for sure so thank you so much for joining us today i hope i hope this was interesting i know it's a little bit different from our usual topics of boots our usual topics of jackets and and salvage denim but it it so goes together so well so thank you so much and uh, yeah, I hope you, you like this video, comment, subscribe, like, and please join us for the next one. Thank you.